Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Mark D. Baldwin and today's lecture is on William Shakespeare. In this lecture I want to talk about William Shakespeare, both his identity and his work. His identity is highly questionable, but the genius of his writing is unquestioned. Born in the mid-16th century, he is considered by many the greatest author of all time. His works include 38 plays, 154 sonnets, and two epic narrative poems. It's very possible that the biography of William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon, England, that we all grew up hearing and reading in introductions to literary units or sections in anthologies, including the Norton introduction, is a fabricated story. I need not repeat the details of that man's life, for you can read them in our anthology. I would simply like to point out that such a man may have lived, but he may not have written anything at all, much less the greatest works in all of literature. Yes, that's right. What I'm suggesting is that William Shakespeare may have been a pseudonym for the real writer of the sonnets and plays. I don't intend to go into it much here, but you can read more about the subject in Joseph Sabran's Alias William Shakespeare and Charlton Ogburn's The Mysterious William Shakespeare. Those two scholars, among many others, have unearthed and documented a wealth of evidence that strongly makes the case against the Stratford man. Briefly, William Shakespeare of Stratford never had much education, travel experience, or association with the court. All characteristics the writer of the plays seems to enjoy. William Shakespeare's only existing signatures are, according to handwriting experts, written by a nearly illiterate person. His last will and testament mentions nothing about his writings or books, saying only that he leaves his, quote, household stuff to his wife. His son-in-law's many volumes of journals mention nothing at all about him being a writer of plays and poetry. Most damaging to his case is the fact that absolutely no concrete evidence whatsoever exists to link him to the plays. So who was the writer? The most likely candidate for the title of the real William Shakespeare is Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. He was educated, widely traveled, and knowledgeable in the ways of the court. In fact, many pieces of inside information and intimate details and clues regarding various scandals of the times involving members of the court appear in the plays. He was a friend of Ben Jonson, who was instrumental in associating William Shakespeare of Stratford with the plays, thus his connection in the conspiracy. Experts who have compared William Shakespeare's sonnets with the few sonnets attributed to De Vere all assert how they seem to have been written by the same man. And De Vere's family crest depicts a man shaking a spear. Quite a clever clue, wouldn't you say? Well, regardless of who the real writer of the sonnets and plays was, we have a remarkable body of work well worth celebrating on its own terms. So let's continue now by discussing some of the qualities and aspects of this work. Many of Shakespeare's works are a blend of history and myth. He borrowed heavily from Ovid's Metamorphoses and the Hollingshed's Chronicles two primary source books for writers of his day. They contain both history and myth. The problem with them both is that their history is often oral, and their myth is just that, myth. Thoroughly dramatized and fictionalized stories of people who may or may not have even existed. Not to mention the various gods and forces said to rule over the world of men. Thus, Shakespeare's sources cannot be relied upon as an accurate record of the past. 
So the reader is in store for a rich and complex blend of material from a writer steeped in stories about a past and a universe clouded and complicated by the unknown and the made up. People groped, as we still do, for an understanding of nature, humanity, and the mysteries of life. Add to that mix a very well-informed experience of events, culture, and society of the day, and what you have are wild tales, impossibly conceived and radically unstable in their potential meanings and connections with reality. In other words, Shakespeare's text are a multi-level kaleidoscopic insight into the world as it was, is, and is imagined to be. Another astounding aspect of the texts is Shakespeare's use of language. He coined over 3,000 words and thousands of expressions as well. While many people have trouble understanding the Elizabethan dialect, it's still close enough to modern English for the careful and interested reader to comprehend, and with great reward and joy from the effort, as the depth of Shakespeare's expression is second to none. Shakespeare's two main topics are love and hate. His exploration of those topics through numerous plots and subplots spawned numerous themes and insights about human nature and man's fate on this stage, his favorite metaphor for life. Many of Shakespeare's observations, ideas, and insights transcend time. They're universal and timeless, applicable to all people, always. Shakespeare's career fell into four phases. Uh, the pre-1594 phase, which included the plays Richard III and the Comedy of Errors, 1594 to 1600, when he wrote Henry VIII and the Midsummer Night's Dream, among others, 1600 to 1608, when he wrote Macbeth, King Lear, and the other major tragedies, and 1608 to his death, when he wrote Cymbeline and the Tempest. The first period is marked by his evolution. For, as with most writers, Shakespeare developed his style, obviously, in his first period. His roots extend deep into Roman and medieval drama. His contemporary, Christopher Marlowe, also may have influenced him at this time. In the second phase, we see Shakespeare's style improving and growing. Most significantly, he begins weaving comedy and tragedy together. In his third phase, Shakespeare wrote most of his greatest works, his great tragedies. These epics are among the greatest pieces of literature ever written by anyone, anywhere. In his fourth phase, Shakespeare wrote romantic, tragic comedies. His use of symbolism is greatest in this stage, and his writing exudes a mature and serious nature. One of the four great tragedies, Macbeth, King Lear, and Othello being the others, Hamlet is a provocative, wild, and often mad story of a son's dark dilemma over avenging his father's murder. Hamlet's many themes include love versus hate, revenge versus forgiveness, sight, which is insight, foresight, hindsight, blindness, etc., darkness and light, unregulated passions, power to hurl people into chaos, change and transformation, power, property, and inheritance. In closing, I'd like to suggest that you watch a video or two of Hamlet to enhance your appreciation and understanding. Kenneth Branagh has a terrific version. It's full length. Uh, the production values are excellent. And Mel Gibson has a shortened version that's very quick and fast, and a lot of the fat's taken out, and I think Mel does a terrific job as Hamlet. So thanks for your attention, and I'll see you on the discussion board.